ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಗುರುಮೂರ್ತಿ ಸ್ಮರೇನ್ ನಿತ್ಯ ಗುರೋರ್ ನಾಮ ಸದಾ ಜಪೇತ್ ಗುರೋರಾಜ್ಞಾ ಪ್ರಕುರ್ವೀತ ಗುರೋರನ್ಯಂ ನ ಭಾವೇತ್ ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವ ಬಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷ್ಯಕೃತ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಸೊ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಗುರು ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಇಸ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ಗುರು ಗೀತಾ ಇಸ್ ಗುರು ಗೀತಾ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಮೆನಿ ಶ್ಲೋಕಾಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದೆಮ್ ಐ ಸೆಟ್ ಆಫ್ರಿಂಗ್ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಟು ಗುರು ಇಟ್ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ಲಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಯಂ ಗುರು ಮೂರ್ತಿಂ ಸ್ಮರೇತ್ ಒನ್ ಶುಡ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ದ ಗುರುಸ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಗುರೋ ನಾಮ ಸದಾ ಜಪೇತ್ ಒನ್ ಶುಡ್ ಚ್ಯಾಂಟ್ ಗುರುಸ್ ನೇಮ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಗುರೋ ಆಜ್ಞಾ ಪ್ರಕುರ್ವೀತ ಗುರೋ ಆಜ್ಞಾ ಪ್ರಕುರ್ವೀತ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಅಡ್ಹಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಟು ವಾಟ್ ದ ಗುರು ಸೆಸ್ ದ ಗುರುಸ್ ಮೆಸೇಜ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಗುರೋ ಅನ್ಯಂ ನ ಭಾವೇತ್ ಒನ್ ಶುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕಾಂಟೆಂಪ್ಲೇಟ್ ಆನ್ ಎನಿ ಒನ್ ಅದರ್ ದ್ಯಾನ್ ಗುರು ಸೊ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಗುರು ಎವ್ರಿ ಡೇ ಇನ್ ದ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಚ್ಯಾಂಟ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಐ ಸೆಡ್ ವಾಸ್ ಯು ವುಡ್ ಹವ್ ಹರ್ಡ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವ ಬಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷ್ಯ ಕೃತ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ ಸಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಶ್ರೀ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಆದಿಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಆದಿಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಬಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೊ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಇಸ್ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ಭಾಷ್ಯಕಾರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ರೋಟ್ ದ ಸೂತ್ರಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಸೂತ್ರಸ್ ಎ ಫಾರಿಸಮ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೊ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಸಿ ಹೌ ಹೀ ಇಸ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಕಾಂಪೋಸಿಷನ್ ಸೊ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಆಫರ್ಡ್ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಟು ಆದಿಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಭಗವತ್ ಬಾದರಾಯಣ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಸಾಹಿತ್ಯ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಲಿಟ್ರೇಚರ್ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ಹರಿಸ್ತುತಿ ಆರ್ ಹರಿಮೀಡೆ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಟು ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಆದಿಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಕಂಪೋಸ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಆದಿಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ಟಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಭಾಷ್ಯ ಕಾಮೆಂಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ದೆನ್ ಟೆನ್ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಸೂತ್ರಾಣಿ ಸೊ ದೋಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಕೇಮ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಪಾಪ್ಯುಲರ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಪ್ರಸ್ಥಾನತ್ರಯ ದೋಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಆರ್ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ಪ್ರಸ್ಥಾನತ್ರಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ಯೂಸ್ಫುಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಇಂಟೆಲೆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಓರಿಯೆಂಟೆಡ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸೆಟ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಉತ್ತಮ ಅಧಿಕಾರಿ ಹೂ ನೋ ದ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ವಿಷಯ ನಾವು ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಹಿ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಜೀವಾಸ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದ ಟ್ರೂತ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಸೊ ಆಸ್ ಹಿ ಟ್ರಾವೆಲ್ಡ್ ಟು ಮೆನಿ ಪ್ಲೇಸಸ್ ಹಿ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಕಂಪೋಸ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕಾಸ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಪ್ರೇಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ಲೋಕಲ್ ಡೇಟಿ ಸೊ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮೆನಿ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕಾಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೌಂಡ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯೆಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಈಸಿ ಟು ರಿಸೈಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಗುಣಮೂರ್ತಿ ಉಪಾಸನ ಸಗುಣಮೂರ್ತಿ ಸ್ತುತಿ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಪ್ರೇಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಅ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಗಿವೆನ್ ಟು ಭಗವಾನ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ವಿತ್ ಆಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಸಗುಣಮೂರ್ತಿ ಉಪಾಸನ ಫಾರ್ ಅನ್ ಟು ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಗಿವೆನ್ ಮೆನಿ ಶ್ಲೋಕಾಸ್ ದೆನ್ ದೆರ್ ಆರ್
this uh, harimide or haristuti this can be recited and enjoyed by all and uh, uh, everyone can benefit also that is the distinction of this uh, haristuti is every shloka in it gives the meaning of the upanishad what the upanishad tries to tell is conveyed by these shlokas every stotra gives you uh, something that is told in the upanishad so that is the distinction of uh, this particular shloka composition so if this shloka is by hearted and uh, contemplated upon if you contemplate on the meaning conveyed by this shloka then all the content which is conveyed by the upanishads can be known and the result will be one will enjoy the knowledge of the self that can be obtained at the same time devotion to bhagavan will become more intense so unto that this uh, stuti is uh, very distinct this hari stuti has two commentaries one by a scholar known as anandagiri and another one by swayam prakashayati now uh, this commentary by anandagiri is not uh, very popularly available this uh, other commentary by swayam prakashayati it is also known as hari tattva muktavali so primarily i will be following this commentary to explain the meaning of uh, this stotram what i intend to do is uh i will read sections of the commentary as such and uh, explain the meaning and because the commentary is very exhaustive in some places i will uh, give you the gist of uh, what the author is trying to explain uh with that we'll now enter into the stotra hari stuti there are 44 verses in this uh, stotram all these 44 verses are constructed or they are set in what is known as matta mayura vrittam matta mayura meter or vrittam or chandas which means basically there will be four quarters four padas in each shloka and uh, every padam or every line will have 13 13 13 syllables this is a samavritta that is every line has the same number of syllables now interestingly this uh, hari stuti we we'll look into the title itself hari stuti itself uh, in vishnu sahasra namam it is uh, mentioned bhagwan vishnu has both the name hari hi and uh, stuti hi also so we we'll look into the meaning of hari hi and uh, stutihi so just the word harihi bhagavat padacharya himself uh, has explained it as sahetuka samsaram harati iti harihi means the one who removes samsara harati means removes so bhagavan the lord is called hari why because he removes what does he remove when he is invoked by proper actions that is proper prayer he removes all our papas sins he also removes the samsara along with its cause sahetuka samsaram harati that is self ignorance which is the cause for samsara is removed it is because of bhagavan's grace that one is taken to the teacher and the teaching so thereby one gains knowledge and this knowledge removes the ignorance and thereby totally it removes the samsara therefore bhagavan is addressed as hari hi then uh, we'll look at this word stuti hi stutihi the vaishishtya of uh, that word is you know you can also derive it as a noun as well as the 
action. So that is the distinction of uh, that word. Stutihi means the one in the form of the act of praise, the kriya. Stutihi stavana kriya api harihi eva. The kriya, the act also is Bhagavan Hari. So stuti is the act of praising and that is also the Lord himself. So Bhagavan Vishnu is known as stutihi. Here, of course, in Hari Stutihi, it means versus praising the Lord as Hari. This is the meaning. Then, one may think that Hari is the uh, form of Vishnu who has four arms uh, and, you know, we worship in the temple. But uh, uh, that is not the Hari who is uh, implied by the title Haristutihi, we will see how the meaning of Hari itself is uh, explained by the author himself and uh, we will see that is the meaning intended to be uh, told by Bhagavad Pada Adi Shankaracharya also. So, uh, yeah, actually some scholars say, you know, this Totra could have been titled as Vishnu Stutihi because in the first verse, he uh, addresses Bhagavan as Vishnu. But then one could mistake it to be Saguna Brahma Vishaya Manasavya Paraha. One could think it is a stotra addressed to Bhagavan with a form. Now, that uh, understanding is not okay. Iti. Therefore, uh, as though intending to give clarity on that, Bhagavad Padacharya has... Um, uh, titled it as Haristutihi. Okay, that being said, now we will uh, go into the uh, meaning. This author, uh, Swayam Prakashayati, he begins his commentary with a, a very profound uh, introduction itself. So, it is good to go through the introduction with the commentary per se. So, I will read the introduction line by line and uh, try to explain as much as possible what he means. So, first he starts by telling, I will read the sentence and then uh, explain. Okay, the introduction starts like this. Satya Jnanandatmakam Advitiyam Brahma Eva Shuddha Sattva Pradhana Maya Upadhikam Sat Ishwara Bhavam Malina Sattva Pradhana Avidya Upadhikam Sat Jeeva Bhavam Cha Jagama. So we will see the meaning. It is said that Advitiyam Brahma Eva. Who is this Hari who is being praised here? It is the Advitiyam Brahma. Advitiyam Brahma means the one and only truth is Brahman. And that Brahman is being praised. What is the form of this Brahman? So the form of this Brahman, his Swarupa Lakshanam as given in the Taitriya Upanishad. Swarupa Lakshanam means <clears throat> a description of the nature of that Brahman. What is that Brahman? It is a description is given as Satyam Jnanam Anantam. That anantam is anandam. So, satya jnana ananda atmakam is the word used by the author here, uh, which is in keeping with the Upanishad uh, description for Brahman. Now, what is this satyam jnanam anandam? That we have to understand. And, uh, you know, hours and uh, hours of uh, talks, and pages of commentary is written on that. Uh, here our intention is to get a bird's eye view of that. So in brief, uh, I will explain what is Satyam, Jnanam, Anandam. So Satyam means that Brahman, uh, Satyam is that Brahman which when known properly, Satyam is that when 
ascertained properly at any point of time will be the same it never changes that is satyam brahman is satyam because it never changes at any point of time now i know brahman and then after a gap of some time i come back to brahman brahman is the same so satyam is brahman there is nothing other than this satyam in the universe because there is no object in the world which remains the same unaffected by time and therefore the only satya vastu is brahman so brahman is described as satyam brahma then um, brahman is the only satyam and so it enjoys the status of being the cause karanam of everything in the universe so then we get the next meaning so that satyam brahma is the very existence sat that satyam brahma is the very existence which lends existence to the jagat the world so then what the shruti says is brahman is not only satyam the sat but also gnanam satyam gnanam anandam that's how the author has started so we are going to the next word gnanam brahman is not only satyam brahman is also gnanam what is gnanam here it is pure consciousness the chit the word chit has the meaning of gnanam pure consciousness brahman being a cause there is a possibility of brahman becoming a substance so a substance is always inert jadam to negate that to negate that uh, this could be a substance it is said that brahman is gnanam then one doubt arises supposing you say brahman is knowledge then what happens is as we know in this world knowledge means a given thought or a vritti it is a given thought form and then we know that so many thoughts occur and they are always changing so we will uh, uh, have the tendency to think that brahman as gnanam is subject to change no so gnanam uh, also has the differences of knower known knowledge iti so then how do we understand this word gnanam here so gnanam here means consciousness brahman is the consciousness which pervades everything but one is not aware of it just like the light pervades everything because of which we are able to see everything if you reflect upon this any object that we see any book that we read the wall that we see the house that we see any object that we see is because light is falling on that and then our eye is picking up the reflection because it is happening so fast we miss that truth that it is the light because of which i am able to see it so like that brahman which is the consciousness the very existence of everything and that which pervades everything so satyam gnanam brahma is not known we take it for granted so consciousness is that because of which we are experiencing every thought so gnanam satyam gnanam brahman is consciousness because of which we are experiencing every thought throughout the day one experiences that i am a conscious being i am not a inert thing so it is said that consciousness is an ever experienced fact what one is uh, what one is conscious of what one is conscious about that will vary but that one is a conscious being is invariable it is a continuously experienced fact so in that way brahman is satyam gnanam then the word anandam anandam implies a happiness which is fullness happiness in which there is no more seeking no more want so therefore it is anantam endless 
happiness born of fullness which is anantam endless there is no more seeking so having said that brahman being that satyam jnanam anantam brahma then next uh, satyam jnanam anantam brahma that is the only truth advitiyam see here this word advitiyam sometimes we understand it as not to just because dvitiyam is said sometimes one thinks or one could think about the number but that's not the meaning over here here advitiyam is no difference that's the meaning bheda is the different uh, is the word uh, to be taken for the number so advitiyam means no bheda there is no difference why because all that is here is one and only truth brahman so that advitiyam brahma which is of the nature of satyam existence jnanam consciousness anandam fullness what does that brahman do shuddha satva pradhana maya upadhikam sat ishvara bhavam jagama this brahman has to materialize so for the process of materialization this brahman takes the adjunct maya and brahman plus maya comes to be known as ishvara and what is that maya now maya itself is described as that which has three constituents three constituents known as sattva rajas and tamas now this sattva rajas tamas usually is uh, spoken of as qualities or attributes guna uh, it's not to be understood uh, in the way in which you know uh, in our uh, transactional world we understand guna so you know the word constituent uh, can be used here so the three constituents of sattva rajas and tamas so how do we know about this uh, you know sattva rajas tamas is only by the effect how each one behaves and acts based upon that one can uh, understand what is sattva guna what is rajo guna and what is tamo guna so shuddha sattvam means that uh, completely pure constituent known as sattvam that becomes predominant in the maya with that medium or adjunct brahman is reflected and known as ishvara then with malina sattva pradhana malina uh, the word itself means impure but here impurity is not the meaning to be taken malina here means some sattva and some rajoguna is also added so addition of the other constituent is present so the predominance of sattva is reduced so then it is called malina sattva pradhana then with malina sattva this brahman is uh, known as jiva this brahman when it uh, in order to materialize when it combines with malina sattva so brahman plus malina sattva uh, comes to be that malina sattva of maya is known as avidya now see the words maya and avidya are kind of similar in meaning but uh, when we say brahman plus maya we say the reflected consciousness is ishvara brahman plus avidya what is avidya it is the malina sattva guna predominance of the constituent sattva uh, and some amount of the constituent rajo guna tamo guna also so then it is known as avidya so brahman plus avidya in that medium reflected consciousness is known as jiva now another way of knowing this jiva is jiva is a jiva because it does not know the truth about its nature as that brahman so therefore it is known as jiva the individual is known as a jiva so now what do we understand from this first statement in the introduction that only truth which exists and lends existence to everything else the jagat is the non different 
non-differentiated uh, Brahman only and that Brahman is uh, described as Satyam existence, Jnanam consciousness, Anandam, Anantam, fullness, uh, happiness, Iti and that Brahman plus uh, Shuddha Sattvam, the pure constituent Sattva Guna, uh, that is the Maya with that Brahman plus Maya comes to be known as Ishwara and Brahman with Avidya which is Malina Sattva comes to be known as Jiva. So Brahman plus Maya is equal to Ishwara, Brahman plus Avidya is equal to Jiva. Now uh, this same thing is uh, explained by Nrsimha Tapini Upanishad. So the statement, supportive statement uh, given by the author is Jeeveshav Abhasena Karoti Mayacha Avidyacha Swayameva Bhavati Swayameva means uh, itself, that Brahman itself uh, becomes Ishwara when it combines with Maya or when it associates with Maya it is materialized as Ishwara and that same Brahman when it associates with Avidya it is reflected and known as Jiva. This is told in the Upanishad. Tatra Maya Pratibimba Ishwaraha. So what does this Ishwara do? Brahman with Maya reflected and known as Ishwara. What does this Ishwara do? Tam Mayam Vashikritya. Keeping Maya under its control. So that Ishwara keeping Maya under its control comes to be known as the Sarvagnyaha Sarva Shaktischa Sanna. So Sarvagnyaha, interestingly Sarvagnyaha is also another name for Bhagavan Vishnu in Vishnu Sahasranamam and uh, for that also Bhagavad Pada Charyaha himself has given a explanatory meaning. He says, Sarvam Janati Iti Sarvagnyaha. Then he also says, Sarvaschasau Nyascha Iti Sarvagnyaha. Sarvaschasau Nyascha means he is Sarva, all, and he is Nya, means the knower. So the Upanishad says, Idam Sarvam Yat Ayam Atma. All that is here is Atma alone. This is a statement from Brihadaranyaka Upanishad. Then the other uh, explanation, Sarvam Janati Iti Sarvagnyaha means Bhagavan is omni, omniscient. Uh, he knows everything, one who knows everything. So when it is said Bhagavan knows all, he has neither self-ignorance nor does he have any ignorance about any object. So, there is nothing which is not known to Bhagavan, either generally or in detail. So, he is Sarvagnyaha and Sarvavit. So, this Maya Pratibimba Ishwara keeps that Maya under his control and becomes the omniscient, all knower Sarvagnyaha and also Sarva Shaktihi Cha Sanna becoming the all powerful any power that one has one knows to uh, have is bhagavan that is ishwara so th all this power also is in ishwara and uh, gaining this power becoming the all knower what does ishwara do there must be a purpose why ishwara has all this power and has this maya under his control jivanam sarvesham Abhyudaya Apavargartham. Why is he all knower and all powerful? Because he wants to bless all the jivas with all the four uh, purpose of life. You know, the life is there for gaining Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. These are the four Chaturvida Purushartha. So, to bless the jivas with Dharma, Artha, Kama, and moksha this ishwara is sarvagnyaha and sarva shaktiman then how does he do it does he have to do something specific so the next word in the commentary is sankalpa matrena just by his will 
he is able to do it what effort does he have to put in leelaya jagataha sargasthiti layane aacharati effortlessly this all knowing all powerful ishvara just with his own will does the karya does the act of srishti sthiti and laya acts of creation sustenance or nourishing or protecting and resolving or dissolving or withdrawing the creation back into himself these actions are done by that ishvara effortlessly just with his will alone and that is the anugraha that is the blessing now, now tatra ye jeevaha now we see now what is the connection between jeeva and ishvara okay brahman with maya becomes ishvara and is able to uh, perform the actions of creation sustenance and dissolution so what happens to me the jeeva who doesn't know the truth about myself so there as though answering that question uh, the author says ishvarah jeevanam anugrahartam vishnu shankar akyam jagrah that ishvara takes the form of vishnu the form of shiva uh, and blesses the jeevas now how that is explained it's a long sentence tatra ye jeevah swagnya roopa shruti smriti ukta marga anatilanghanena swatmanam bhajante those jeevas who make an effort to know about the truth of the self how according to what is uh, laid out according to the vedic way of life shruti smriti ukta marga anatilanghanena without deviating from the mandates of the uh, vedas and smriti smriti means all the puranas and uh, itihasa granthas are known as smriti granthas so what is smriti telling the same thing that is told in the veda is made easier and uh, taught in the form of many stories so shruti smriti ukta as stipulated as mandated uh, in the veda and in the smriti grantha without deviating from that path anatilanghanena swatmanam bhajante the jeevas who try to learn about the self they are the seekers the seekers of self knowledge unto them to them tesham anugrahaya to bless the, them so blessing them is the purpose of ishvara so ishvara being incarnated in a particular form so in order to bless the seekers of self knowledge what is ishvara doing upasanartham cha ishvara is being manifest incarnated in a particular form so that it is easy for the jeeva to meditate upon that form it is much easier we know that uh, meditating upon a particular form than to meditate upon no form so it is easier to meditate on saguna brahman than nirguna brahman saguna brahman means brahman with qualities or attributes in a particular form uh, it can have different names uh, but it is all uh, implying the same brahman so uh, worshiping brahman in a particular form is much easier than worshiping brahman Uh, you know without any form without any attributes the nirguna form ultimately one has to go to nirguna worship is uh, another aspect of uh, learning uh, but this upasanartham cha the form is taken by ishvara what form it is here uh, particularly author uh, gives the names vishnu and shankara so how is the form of vishnu he says shankha chakra gada that much is for vishnu the form of vishnu wielding the conch the wheel of time chakram the mace 
and then the form of shiva wielding shula mruga parashudharam the holding the trident a deer and an axe that kind of shiva and uh, this form of vishnu and form of shiva is of what complexion what color iti one may think so neelotpaladala kala megha purna chandra sphatika samana varnam so lord vishnu uh, is known to us in a dark complexion which uh, we want to know what kind of dark so therefore we have to use some uh, example from the world as we know so neelotpaladala kala megha neelotpalam is the blue lily it is darkish blue and kala megha is the dark clouds which are uh, you know going to pour down heavy rain uh, at the end of uh, the creation so that kind of a color that is for vishnu vishnu is supposed to be uh, meditated upon in a hue of dark uh, color and then lord shiva is supposed to be very fair and clear in complexion like how you visualize shiva as purna chandra sphatika samanam purna chandra full moon is very clear and you can't attribute a particular color to that so purna chandra does not mean you take that full moon and place it and that moon is the face not like that you take the guna there what is uh, what is conveyed by purna chandra something which is clear and bright and shining by itself so that is crystal clear we say so purna chandra sphatika samana varnam it is a complexion which cannot be really described it is only to be enjoyed and then further ananda ghanam supposing all the happiness and fullness came in one form how would it be that is the form of vishnu and that is the same form of shiva also and then uh, you personify vishnu and shiva then the personified form sarvanga sundaram he says every part individually when you uh, visualize and meditate and meditate upon it has a distinct beauty so sarvanga sundaram every part of this personified form of ishwara is beautiful now when we say sarvanga sundaram uh what do you mean by a beautiful a part being beautiful if we ask you know as though an answer shastra itself has given what is known as samudrika lakshanam what are the ideal physical features of a personified form iti shastra itself has that so uh if you imagine all the ideal physical features in uh, the form of mahavishnu Uh, and he is wielding the shankha chakra gada then in the form of lord shiva who is crystal clear shining in a form and full happiness being uh, uh, reflected every part of that uh, person shiva is according to the ideal physical feature like this murti dwayam two personified forms vishnu and shiva which is shuddha satvamayam it is full of shuddha sattva gunam uh, the constituent predominantly sattva gunam as though that is pervading everywhere that is the form and it is bahu leela spadam this vishnu and this shiva have innumerable glories bahu leela spadam means they are the abode of innumerable glories and then that form of ishwara came to be known by the names vishnu shankara akyam akyam is the name name given is vishnu and shankara so who are they both sayeva ishwarah jagrah that same ishwara uh, took these forms or attained these forms and came to bless the jeevas now i will read the sentence tatra ye jeevaha स्वाजुति उक्त मग अनतिलंघन स्वात्मा भजंते तुग्रहाय उपासना शंखचक्र गूल मृग परशुधर नीलोत्पलदल काल मेघ पूर्णचंद्र स्फटिक सन वर्ण आनंद घन सर्वांग सुंदर मूर्ति द्वयम शुद्ध सत्वमयम 
பகுலீலாஸ்பதம் விஷ்ணு சங்கர ஆக்கியம் சகயேவ ஈஸ்வர ஜக்ராக ஜக்ராக இஸ் ஸ்வீகிருத்தவான் ஓகே திஸ் மச் இஸ் ஃபார் சகுண ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் பிரம்மன் தென் வேர் டூ தீஸ் டூ ஃபார்ம்ஸ் அபைட் வுட் பி த நெக்ஸ்ட் கொஸ்டின் ஸோ த கமெண்ட் கமெண்ட்ரி கண்டினியூஸ் ஆஸ் தத் ச மூர்த்தி துவயம் தோஸ் டூ ஃபார்ம்ஸ் வைகுண்ட கைலாசாதிஷு இன் த பிளேஸ் நோன் ஆஸ் வைகுண்ட இட் இஸ் கனெக்டட் டு தி அபோர்ட் ஆஃப் பகவான் விஷ்ணு கைலாசா இஸ் த அபோர்ட் ஃபார் பகவான் சிவ ஆஸ் டோல்ட் இன் த புராணா பட் தென் வேர் இஸ் திஸ் வைகுண்ட அண்ட் வேர் இஸ் திஸ் பிளேஸ் கைலாசா பக்தானாம் ஹிருதயேஷு இட் இஸ் தி ஹார்ட் ஆஃப் ஆல் த டிவோட்டிஸ் தட் இஸ் வைகுண்ட அண்ட் தட் இஸ் கைலாஷா If you visualize Brahman as Bhagavan Vishnu, then your Hridaya is Vaikuntha. If you visualize that Brahman as uh, Bhagavan Shiva with uh, Shula, Mriga, Parashu, the bright shining form, then your heart is uh, Kailasa. So, this is the abode for Vishnu and Shankara. And when do they reside in this place? Nityam sannihitam vartate. They are always continuously present in the heart. So, as long as we don't become that devotee, as long as the jiva doesn't become that devotee, this Vishnu and Shankara are not known. they are present but it is the jeeva who seeks so that's why first itself he said ye jeeva ha swagnya roopa shruti smriti ukta marga anati langhanena swatmanam bhajante so one has to seek and become the devotee committed devotee then one will see the presence of uh, vishnu and shankara very much in one's own heart always present then tatra cha bhagavan vishnu ho so okay as vishnu and as shiva this brahman came to be incarnated so what did this vishnu do how does the jiva get blessed iti the commentary continues to say in brief what the next long sentence is going to say is bhagavan vishnu incarnated as shri bhagavat badarayana ha and gave the aphorisms known as brahma sutrani to the jivas studying which one will attain moksha purushartha that is the gist so how should the seekers mind be that is taken up and explained so to get into vedanta shastram and understand the content which is brahman which is told and taught by the upanishad to understand that what is the internal qualification that is implied in this one long sentence i'll read the sentence and give you the meaning tatra cha bhagavan vishnu ho phalatyaga purvakam nirantara anushthita vedanu vachana yagnya dana tapobhihi vimalikrita swantanam nit அனித்திய வஸ்து விவேகேன திருணீகிருத பிரம்மலோகாதிபோகாம் சமதமாதிமதாம் முமுட்சூணாம் பகுவிதஸ்வநிஸ்வாசூத வேதார்த்தவிச்சார அசமர்த்தானாம் புருஷவராணாம் மோக்ஷசாதனீபூத பிரம்மாத்மதத்துவிரமாத்ம பிரமாத்மதத்துவோதனாய ஸ்வ அம்சேன ஸ்ரீ பகவத் பாதராயண ரூபேண அவதீர்ணா பகுவித நியாய உபேதை அத்தியாய சதுஷ்டய ஆத்மகை பிரம்மசூத்தை சகல வேதாந்த வாக்கியானி சங்கிரதையா மாச நவ் ஐ வில் எக்ஸ்பிளைன் ஹவு த குவாலிஃபிகேஷன் இஸ் ப்ரெசென்டட் பை த ஆத்தர் the construct of the sentence the words used the long compound words and all reflect the scholarship and the devotion of the author himself so 
the base sentence is bhagavan vishnu in the form of bhagavad badarayana incarnated and gave the brahma sutras uh, which are the aphorisms giving the explaining the meaning of the sentences in vedanta that is upanishad so and how is that uh, text uh, presenting these are terse form of sentences and uh, those are classified into four chapters adhyaya chatushtayatmakai and in four chapters these uh, aphorisms are telling what bahuvida nyaya upetaihi they are giving a logical analysis of the meaning of the vedanta vakyani of all the sentences which are difficult to understand and not properly understood so the meaning of all those upanishad sentences are logically presented in these uh, brahma sutrani by shri bhagavat badarayana and who is bhagavat badarayana swa amshena avatirna bhagavan vishnu itself part of vishnu itself he is a amsha avatara of mahavishnu so that is shrimad bhagava shrimad shri bhagavat badarayana and then what do these uh, aphorisms do if i study them they give you brahmaatma tattva bodhanaya the purpose of having given these brahma sutras is to teach to the seeker earnest seeker the truth about himself which is brahman himself or herself truth about the jiva is brahman to teach that and then that knowledge itself becomes a means for attaining moksha moksha sadhani bhuta so that knowledge is a means to attain moksha moksha means what liberation from a life of becoming coming and being born again and again in this samsara only gives uh, gives us dukkha we are subjected to sukha dukkha sukha dukkha the duality so we never feel settled as a jiva so to give you liberation from that kind of a bound feeling uh, this brahma sutra studying this brahma sutra is a means to attain that liberation now what kind of a mindset will be able to understand this and uh, gain the end shamadamaadi matam the mind which has gained the virtues or mastered all the virtues which are uh, classified in the prakarana granthas and all so you know starting from tattva bodha these are taught shama dama shraddha titiksha uparati mumuksha so muktumicha mumuksha all these are the values to be developed so a mind which has attained these values is qualified to understand this and then what will such a mind which has gained these virtues do this mind will uh, move away from the karmatha way of life trini krita brahma lokadi bhoga naam now we know that the veda is classified into karma bhaga and jnana bhaga so the first portion of the veda is what most people will follow you want your desire for having a family desire to attain swarga loka desire to attain all forms of wealth all these are welcome and to attain them so many rituals uh, forms of prayers have been given and uh, uh, those are uh, lived through and then with that experience this mind uh, will drop them and understand that permanent liberation from them is what one should seek so even swarga loka the person will drop the person will not seek swarga loka but will go on to the jnana khanda that is the vedanta portion of the veda and then develop these virtues of shamadamaadi and then such a person will have what is known as the first qualification nitya anitya vastu viveka very clear understanding about uh, only brahman is the truth satyam all the rest is mithya 
that which is apparently real, not the truth of existence. It is that discriminatory knowledge will be there in this person. And uh, further, this person will have Vimali Krita Swantanam. Such jivas will have a very pure mind. What is the meaning of pure mind? Such a mind which is earnestly seeking to know the truth of the self will not be swayed by Kama, Krodha, Mada, Lobha, Moha, Matsarya, which are known as the enemies of the mind. This mind is therefore said to be purified when it is free of all these defects. And then how was that achieved by this seeker? Nirantara Anushthita Vedanu Vachana Yajnadana Tapo Bihi. This person would have lived a life in which uh, there is discipline, uh, very strict disciplinary life according to the uh, mandates of the Veda. And every day this person would have been doing what is known as Panchamaha Yajna. Uh, you know rituals day to day of you know you give this you offer thanks to nature etc and then dana uh, just the act of giving because one wants to give shastra says i have to give and so you just give uh, datavyam iti yet danam tad danam uh, iti kathyate so you give because you have to give and then tapo bhihi tapas is severe austerities to stick to this pursuit of knowledge so with all these having followed this kind of a disciplined lifestyle the person would have done what else would have done karma without expecting the phala because there is a certain acceptance in the mind of ishwara so that is phalatyaga purvakam a mind uh, in which uh, there is no expectation of a particular result so karmanyeva adhikaraha te ma phaleshu kadachana iti as bhagavan has said in bhagavad gita this sadhaka without expecting a particular result means the person knows that a result is bound to come but that result whatever it may be is ishwara prasada so that is the attitude with which this person will focus upon the disciplined lifestyle so that is the palatyaga it doesn't mean that this person doesn't have a desire everyone will have a desire because desire also is ishwara so palatyaga purvakam in that sense uh, will give the meaning of total acceptance of what ishwara gives you so with that attitude of acceptance living a life according to the veda a very disciplined lifestyle being a giver all the time having a purified mind that means mind free from all the uh, kama krodha madalobha moha matsarya then having clarity of what is satyam what is mithya uh, sa um, that is nitya anitya that nityam is only brahman all the rest is anityam having clarity in that understanding and then not being so very connected with going to swarga loka rituals pertaining to swarga loka as the result they are not uh, given much importance in the mind of the seeker so that is trinikrita brahma lokadi bhogana and then the person has fully gained the virtues of shama dama titiksha shraddha uparati and then the person is a very very uh, earnest seeker i want moksha in this life iti mumukshu he is a mumukshu and uh, in that way the person now is not able to just understand the uh, veda artha so in that alone he is asamartha he is 90 percent qualified for moksha just a little gap is there so he is a very uh, great seeker purusha varanam for such uh, earnest seekers as a means to attaining that end moksha this uh, brahma sutras have been given by none other than Lord Vishnu himself in the incarnation as Bhagavat Badarayanaha. So that is what this sentence meant. Then, Tanicha Sutrani, those aphorisms 
ಆರ್ ಅತಿ ಗಂಭೀರ ಅರ್ಥಕತೆಯ ವೆರಿ ಪ್ರೊಫೌಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ದೆನ್ ದುರ್ ಅವಗಮ ಅಭಿಪ್ರಾಯಾಣಿ ಸಂತಿ ದ ಇಂಪ್ಲೈಡ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಎಫೋರಿಸಮ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಸೊ ಫರ್ದರ್ ವೈ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಕಲಿಯುಗ ಇದಾನೀನ್ ಕಲೌ ಸೊ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಲಿಯುಗ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಫುಲ್ ಕೆಪಾಸಿಟಿ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಸೊ ದುಷ್ಟ ಚಿತ್ತ ಹಿ ದೆರ್ ಆರ್ ಬ್ಲೆಮಿಷಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫರ್ದರ್ ದೆರ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆನಿ ಸ್ಕಾಲರ್ಸ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿಟೆಡ್ ದೀ ಸೂತ್ರಾಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಲಿ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಥಿಂಕರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಟಚ್ಡ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಬೈ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಭೇದ ವಾದಿಭಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಭೇದ ವಾದಿಭಿಶ್ಚ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಟಾಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಜೀವ ಈಶ್ವರ ಜಗತ್ ಆಸ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಥಿಂಕರ್ಸ್ ಹೂ ಡೂ ಸೇ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಬಟ್ ದೆನ್ ಹೌ ಇತಿ ದೇ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಲಾಜಿಕಲಿ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವೇ ದೋಸ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟಾಟ್ ದ ಸೂತ್ರಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸಚ್ ಅ ವೇ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಈವನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ದ ಸೀಕರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೇನ್ಡ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಅನ್ಯತ ಅನ್ಯತ ಯೋಜಿತಾನಿ ಪುರುಷಾರ್ಥ ಪರ್ಯವಸಾಯಿನಿ ನ ಬಭೂಹು ಸೊ ಆಲ್ ದೋ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಸೂತ್ರಾಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ನೋ ವೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟಾಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಲಿ ದೆನ್ ದ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ರೀಚ್ ದ ಗೋಲ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೇನ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಸೊ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದ ವ್ಯಾಲಿಡಿಟಿ ಆರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಂಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಇಸ್ ಬ್ರಾಟ್ ಔಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಸೊ ದೆನ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಂಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಸೂತ್ರ ಇಸ್ ಸೋ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ಡ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ಲಿ ಬೈ ದ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಕರ್ಸ್ ಅಥ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಪರಮೇಶ್ವರ ಸರ್ವಜ್ಞ ಶಂಕರ ಸೊ ಭಗವಾನ್ ದ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ದ ಆಲ್ ನೋವರ್ ಶಂಕರ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಸ್ಪಿಷಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಹಿ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಕರುಣೆಯ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಂಪ್ಯಾಷನ್ ಲೋಕ ಅನುಗ್ರಹಾರ್ಥ ಟು ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಜೀವಾಸ್ ಸ್ವ ಅಂಶೇನ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಶಿವ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಅ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಶಿವ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಸರ್ವಜ್ಞ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ರೂಪೇಣ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಇಸ್ ದ ಟೀಚರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾದಿ ಅಂಶೈಹ ಚ ಶಿಷ್ಯಭೂತೈಹ ಸಹ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ನನ್ ಅದರ್ ದ್ಯಾನ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಅದರ್ ದೇವತಾಸ್ they themselves have become the students so in the form of the teacher bhagavat pada shankaracharya and none other than the other celestials coming as the students they incarnated avatirya brahma sutra vyakhyana roopa so bhagavat pada shankaracharya gave the commentary for these uh, aphorisms brahma sutrani and that is known that work is known as known as ಶ್ರೀಮತ್ ಶಾರೀರಕ ಭಾಷ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀಮತ್ ಶಾರೀರಕ ಭಾಷ್ಯ ಕರಣೇನ ಹೀ ಡಿಡ್ ಹೀ ಕಂಪೋಸ್ಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಮೆಂಟ್ರಿ ಶಾರೀರಕ ಭಾಷ್ಯಂ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಶಾರೀರಕ ಇಸ್ ಶರೀರಸ್ಯ ಇದಂ ಶಾರೀರಕಂ ಸೊ ದ ಇನ್ ಡ್ವೆಲ್ಲರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಈಸ್ ನನ್ ಅದರ್ ದ್ಯಾನ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಸೊ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಬ್ರಾಟ್ ಔಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕಮೆಂಟ್ರಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ so what uh, by writing that commentary sakrit shravana matrena sakrit shravana matrena a seeker when uh, studies this commentary even once properly then the seeker enjoys avidya timira tiraskara patiyasa mukhya adhikarinah such a seeker is referred to as the mukhya
how patiyasa means completely it is removed patiyas means group here uh, we can extend it to say doubt free knowledge of the self is the result so such purusha dhaureyan anujagraha so bhagavan blessed such great seekers of uh, high qualification so then atha idanim brahma sutra artha meemamsa this discussion of the aphorisms on brahman brahma sutra artha meemamsa meemamsa is discussion logical discussion such discussion asamarthan those who are not able to understand for them may they also anayasen jhatiti you know quickly as quickly as possible with less effort brahma tattvam sakshat chikirshatah i want to know the truth of the self now in this life itself iti there is that uh, earnest desire but i am asamartha as a seeker i am not able to on my own understand the discussions which are presented in that brahma sutra so i am known as a manda adhikari so those who are not so very fully qualified but are uh, well qualified seekers manda adhikarinah may such jeevas also be blessed anugrihitu kamah with the desire to bless the next level of seekers also shri bhagavan bhashyakarah uh, the great commentator uh, bhagavat pada adi shankaracharyah tesham to these people seekers brahma tattvam that truth about the self which is the only existence should be known very easily how easily karatala bilva phali karayitum imagine you have a ripe fruit right now in your hand it's not outside somewhere you have brought, you have somehow uh, obtained it and it is in your hand within your fist itself you have it all you have to do is eat it you don't know how to eat it that much qualified you are now so to such a seeker to make it that easy like a fruit which is ready to be eaten so such a seeker japamatrena just by repeatedly studying this shastra will gain sakala purushartha sadhakam although moksha is the prime purpose even the others are taken care of and obtained by such a seeker and what is that this is the essence sarva vedanta sarabhutam the essence of all the sentences told in the upanishads what is that that can be shravana manana nididhyasanatmakam that is given in the form uh, which can be shravanam listening studying mananam understanding fully and then nididhyasanam a form which can be contemplated upon such is the form which is known as hari stotram this hari stotram and aripsuhu intending to undertake the composition of this hari stotram chikirshitam pratijanite the desire is to undertake the composition known as hari stotram unto that pratijanite means a proposition a hypothesis is made and then the first shloka is taken up this is the introduction given to this hari stotram where the first line starts with the proposition that i have the desire to explain that truth only truth brahman giving it the name vishnu and hari and that i am presenting in verse form so that it is easy even for a manda adhikari iti bhagavad pada acharya has constructed that first sentence itself that first quarter of the first shloka is a pratigna vakyam this has been brought out by the uh, commentator that is uh, uh, swayam prakash yati so which we saw till now so i will now read the shloka stoshye bhakti 
ಅತ್ಯಾ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಮನಾದಿ ಜಗದಾದಿ ಯಸ್ಮಿನ್ ಎತತ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತಿ ಚಕ್ರಂ ಭ್ರಮತೀಥಂ ಯಸ್ಮಿನ್ ದೃಷ್ಟೆ ನಶ್ಯತಿ ತತ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತಿ ಚಕ್ರಂ ತಂ ಸಂಸಾರಧ್ವಾಂತವಿನಾಶಂ ಹರಿಂ ಈಡೇ ಯಾ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ಸ್ತೋಷ್ಯೆ ಭಕ್ತಿಯ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಅನಾದಿ ಜಗದಾದಿ ಯಸ್ಮಿನ್ ಎತತ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತಿ ಚಕ್ರಂ ಭ್ರಮತಿ ಇತ್ಥಂ ಯಸ್ಮಿನ್ ದೃಷ್ಟೆ ನಶ್ಯತಿ ತತ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತಿ ಚಕ್ರಂ ತಂ ಸಂಸಾರಧ್ವಾಂತವಿನಾಶಂ ಹರಿಂ ಈಡೇ ನಾವು ಹಿಯರ್ ಯು ಸಿ ದಿಸ್ ಪೋರ್ಷನ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ವಾರ್ಟರ್ ಸ್ತೋಷ್ಯೆ ಭಕ್ತಿಯ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಅನಾದಿ ಜಗದಾದಿ ಅನ್ವಯ ವುಡ್ ಬಿ ಅನಾದಿ ಜಗದಾದಿ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಭಕ್ತಿಯ ಅಹಂ ಸ್ತೋಷ್ಯೆ ಸೊ ಐ ಆಫರ್ ಮೈ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರೇಸ್ ಟು ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ದ ಒನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹೋಮ್ ದೆರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೀ ಈಸ್ ದ ಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಜಗತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೌ ಡು ಐ ಪ್ರೇ ವಿತ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಡಿವೋಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಐ ಪ್ರೇ ಐ ಆಫರ್ ದೀಸ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರೇಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಯಸ್ಮಿನ್ ಎತತ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತಿ ಚಕ್ರಂ ಇತ್ಥಂ ಭ್ರಮತಿ ದಿಸ್ ಹೋಲ್ ಜಗತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸಂಸಾರ ಅಬೈಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಕಾಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯಸ್ಮಿನ್ ದೃಷ್ಟೆ ತತ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತಿ ಚಕ್ರಂ ನಶ್ಯತಿ ವಿಜುವಲೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಹೋಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಬಿಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ಎನ್ ಎಂಡ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಹರಿ ತಂ ಸಂಸಾರಧ್ವಾಂತ ವಿನಾಶಂ ಹರಿಂ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಡಾರ್ಕ್ನೆಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಗ್ನೋರೆನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಚ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸಂಸಾರ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಾಯ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ದ ಕಾಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಪ್ರೇಸಿಂಗ್ ಹರಿ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ದ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಗೇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎಂಡ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಹರಿ ಈ ಡೇ ಐ ಆಫರ್ ಮೈ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ರೀಫ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ there is a very extensive commentary for this which we will see in the next uh, session so what i wanted to point out is this whole introduction uh, was given and uh, it was uh, concluding to show that this first quarter is the pratigna vakyam proposition or hypothesis this cause for the uh, jagat as we know it is known as vishnu and to that vishnu i offer my prayers iti that is the pratigna vakyam and then that second quarter is the vishaya content of the shloka and then uh, the prayojana is given in the third quarter and the fourth quarter is i fulfill that hypothesis i offer my prayer to destroy that darkness which is also the prayojanam iti we will we have to understand this in great detail so uh, that we will do in the next session sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramayah sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kashchit dukha bhag bhavet hari om